how does God's power help you and I relate to one another so that the body of Christ can function the way God intends it to? We're going to look at that. I'm Pastor Tim Holsher. We're looking at the work of regeneration. We've been looking out of 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3, that his divine power, that is God's divine power, has given us everything pertaining to life and godliness. And we're talking about the Spirit's work of regeneration, where he regenerated us and put Christ into us. I keep using this image because this is us. This is the Father, and he's joining Christ to us, or joining the Father to us in this, in this instance, is what we're focusing on. And part of the Father being in us, then, allows us to function in the kingdom of God where we can actually live out power because the kingdom of God is not in talk. It's not in how good we can articulate the faith or argue for the faith or any of those things, but it's the power. It's how well we can demonstrate it in our lives. And it's because of this then, in the book of Ephesians, chapter 3 and verse 14, that Paul says, for this reason I bow my knee before the Father. He's talking about a metaphor here. Uh, about talking to God, from whom every family in the heavens and on earth is, derives its name. And we've already talked about that. There is a heavenly family. It's called the church of the body of Christ. And there is an earthly family. It's called Israel. And they both derive their background, their identity from God, because he's the one that established them. Verse 16, what he asks now, when he bows his knee, when he's worshiping the Father and then makes a request in verse 16, that he would give to you according to the riches of his glory, that is of his reputation. And his reputation is that he is generous. He's rich. He's not chintzy. That you might be strengthened or made visibly mighty. Now, he's not going to make us visibly mighty like Superman or some great weightlifter or strong person in the world here. It's going to make us visibly mighty in the inner man. It's going to be an inner strength, an inner might that we're going to display. How would you display an inner might? By mental fortitude, by a proper mental attitude that you keep focused on something. And he says that you might be manifestly mighty or visibly mighty then with his power or by means of his power. And there's our word dunamis here. By means of his power through his spirit, and notice it says, in the inner man. So again, as I said, it's not here in our arms. It's not on our back and our shoulders. This is going to be in the inner man. This is a strength you need inside of you, a strength you need to keep it together, as well as a strength for you to be able to recognize your relationship with all these members of the body. So verse 17, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. Now, this is one of these places, and I realize not everybody is in agreement with me, but in the Greek, it is the Christ. And most of the time when it says the Christ, it's simply referring to the person Jesus Christ. But there are a couple dozen times in Paul's letters in particular in which he uses this expression, the Christ, to look at Jesus Christ himself sharing his identity with us, the body. Never are we that seen this way apart from him. It's only when we are recognized as being sh uh, sharing together in him, only then. And so, is that, so I would say this is that the Christ might settle down at home. This word dwell is not just dwell, which would be the last part of this word here. These last letters, it's with this first letter, it means it's settled down at home so that the Christ would settle down at home. Now, what, he's, what does he mean? Is that in your hearts, through faith and in love, this entity, this Jesus Christ is the head with his body, all seeing it together, that settles down and, and we're not wrestling with it. Now, why, why would a believer need that to settle down at home? Because it's real easy for us as believers to think, well, those believers that are across the street, that those people over there, they're not believers. They're not real, really real Christians. And I can't benefit from those people at all. Or those believers across town or those believers over there. Uh, it's, it's very easy for us as, as Christians to isolate ourselves and kind of only work with Christians that maybe have the same name out front of the church building that we do. Uh, and to even be more particular, only those that have a full doctrinal statement like we have. And they're in agreement with all of that doctrinal statement. 
Listen, there are some things that are fundamental to the faith, such as believing in Jesus' absolute deity, that he's not a created being, believing that he really died on the cross for our sins, that he was buried, that he rose again, and believing that we are saved through faith in that, through faith in the fact that we can be forgiven. Those are some things that are very fundamental to being a Christian. person denies those, then we would say they're not a believer, they're not a Christian. But if those are the things that they say, my salvation rests completely on that, not on my baptism, not on my good works, not on my church, only on this, only on that, then we'd say they're a believer. And they might disagree with us on some other doctrines. But you know what? They also can be used by God in your life. And you need to see them as part of the body and let them, as part of the Christ, with Christ as they had, see this whole entity, not take out some that you don't like, but, but those that would agree to this, you need to let them settle down at home in your heart. And you need strength for that, he says. You need this, you need this visible strength to let that happen in you, and that comes by God's power. And remember, who's supplying this power? God's supplying the power. He's asking it, this power from God for these believers. And he wants them to then be rooted and grounded. Two different words, which we've, we've talked about these verses before. So this isn't the first time, if you've been with us for a long time, you've, we've gone over these verses in a different context, but we're looking at them now from the point of view of the source of power for this. And rooted, think of a, a tree or a plant that has a strong root that keeps it from toppling over in the wind. Or think of a building set on a firm foundation. And he takes this word foundation then and goes into verse 18. He says that you may be able to comprehend, mentally comprehend or mentally be able to apprehend. And this word, first of all, be able is a form of the word iskuo, meaning to be strong, but it's, it's to really be strong. Let's just put it that way. And so this is going to be God giving us an inner strength here to be able to his inner strength, because this goes back up to the power and visibly might, vis, being visibly mighty, that we are made strong enough to apprehend with all the saints what is. And then he gives us this. Now, we would have three dimensions, but he, he just happens to mention four. And don't get, don't get philosophical or, or bizarre with this. He's simply saying there's these dimensions to this building. It's not that we have to come up with a fourth dimension. That is not what he intends here. So with all the saints, not just with saints that are just like you, but with all the saints, what is the breadth? And what is the length? And what is the height and the depth? Now, why does he use those dimensions? And I've been over this with in our studies before. Because at the end of, the cha end of chapter 2, rather than looking at the body of Christ as a body, like we would have a body, he looks at it in that picture as a building, a temple, a structure, a structure that has dimensions. And sometimes when you and I as believers isolate ourselves from certain believers, it's really easy for us to say, yeah, that believer over there, I'm not going to have anything to do with them. And by the time we're done, we have a, I always think we have a temple with one wall instead of four walls and a roof and a floor. We got a one wall or two walled structure. That's all we've got. Think of the when you look at pictures of the, the ruins over across the Middle East and Greece and Rome and Turkey and different places like that, and you see just a couple walls standing where there used, you know there used to be a whole building there, and that's sometimes the way some believers see the body of Christ. But you can have strength from God, be able to grasp all those bodies, all those believers are in the body, and we're all together, and we're all put together in this structure. Even if we don't see eye to eye and some particular, particulars in the faith. They're all important. And you know, when you grasp that, when you were able to grasp the fact that we're all together and be able to appreciate that and what it means, well, it encourages you on a very practical level in having a good day in the Lord. Because only as you see the body of Christ that way, can you actually be relating to them and getting along with them, and actually maybe time, taking time to even listen to them as they maybe talk to you. And that's 
something that does give you, as we've just said, a good day in the Lord. Thank you for joining me today.